Lead generation ads are a great way to, spoiler alert, generate leads directly within social media platforms. Both Facebook and LinkedIn have available options for you to choose from. And today we're gonna to walk through how to set up LinkedIn lead gen ads. Once we're in the LinkedIn interface, there are a couple of ways that we can set up lead gen ads. I'm gonna go through the way that I like to do it best, where you set up the lead gen ad and then you tie it to an ad creative later. But we'll show you the other way as well once we get there. So in the LinkedIn interface, the easiest way to get to lead gen ads is to go to the account assets and click lead gen forms. This will then take you to the lead gen form library. And as you can see, there are no lead gen forms currently in this account. So we need to make the first one. So we'll come over here and click new form template. That will then populate into the form builder itself. So let's run through this. There's quite a bit that can be done on this page. The first is to basically give your lead form an ad. So I gave it a placeholder name lead gen one, pretty simple. Now, once we go into configuring our actual form, there are a couple different things that we can do. You'll notice that there's form fields and hidden fields. We'll tackle the form fields first, and then we'll do hidden fields after that. The first section is actually putting content with your lead gen ad. Once a user clicks on your ad, the form will pop up. You then want to be able to provide them a little bit of additional information, that way they can fully understand why they are seeing the form that they're seeing, what they need to do to get the information that they originally clicked on. So you'll see that there's an offer headline that has a 40 character count, and then offer detail with an additional 160 characters. These are pretty easy to fill out. You can have it be pretty much whatever you want. So I'm gonna just put in placeholder information so you can see what it looks like once you start typing. The cool part is the form on the right will always update to whatever you have in place. So now we can see what those look like once we've typed those in. Um, we can scroll down a little bit and we'll be adding in additional information. So privacy policy as well as custom privacy text. This is required information, especially now with all of the privacy considerations that are out there on the internet. So you'll need to provide your company's privacy policy URL in the appropriate field and then some additional privacy text. If you're not sure what privacy text to use, LinkedIn actually gives you some examples. If you hover over the word bubble here and you click learn more, it'll take you to another page where if you scroll down a bit, it will show you these examples of privacy policy text that you can use. But coming back in here, now that we have our privacy policy in place, let's get to the actual information that you'll be capturing in the lead form. Any of the information in this first box, in this first high level box, will be pre-filled. And LinkedIn tells you which fields will be pre-filled based on the user's profile if that information is available. Simply select all of the fields that you want to have available here. There's everything from their personal information to work history, company, education, all that good stuff. So you can choose whatever you want. And let's say you want to add in the city, and their job title. If you scroll back up, you'll see that the form has changed to now have city and job title fake information in here, just so you can see what that looks like. Like I said, every time you make a change, the lead form example on the right will update. Further down, there is a little bit of additional information. You can ask for the user's gender if you want to. This will not be pre-populated, so just know that the person will have to type this in manually, and that could be a little bit awkward, so maybe make sure that you really need this information before you put it in the form. Now, there are also a couple of custom fields that you can create. The first is a custom question. You can have up to two of these. Simply click the gray plus sign, then you can have two different kinds of question. You can have a single line text input or multiple choice. Single line text input is basically an open-ended question where you ask a question, somebody types in some information manually. That one's pretty straightforward. So let's look at what a multiple choice question would look like. You can then add in the question that you have as well as the options available. So let's just say we wanna ask what somebody's favorite color is. We then want to provide the different options that they can choose from. 
So let's say that we want them to be able to choose from blue, red, or other. Now if we scroll back up and look at our form, we will notice that there is a custom question at the top that asks for favorite color. It's already pre-populating the first answer here, um, but that's just because it won't let us actually preview the drop-down in this form. But you can see that there's an arrow here that if the user sees this, they click on it, it should populate the red or other options available so they can choose from that drop-down. Further down, you can also add a custom checkbox. This can be great if you want to ask people if they want to sign up for your newsletter or if they need to fit certain requirements before they actually fill out the form. So let's say you want to ask somebody about signing up for a newsletter. Then when we scroll back up, we will see that at the bottom, it shows a checkbox and then sign up for my newsletter with the same text. The user can then either check it or leave it unchecked before submitting the form. Now the last piece is the thank you message. This is optional, but I highly encourage you to do it to make sure that you are letting the person know what the next steps are. This is just the same as using a thank you page when somebody comes to your website and converts on your landing page. So let's put in just some placeholder copy here. You can see that there's a 160 character limit here as well. Then you would put in a link to your website. So if somebody wants to click through to your website, they can get more information that way. You can then also choose the call to action that you want to have. It can be learn more, view now, download, try now. Um, whatever makes the most sense for the URL that you're inputting in the link to your website field. When you're finished, just hit save. And it'll bring you back to the lead forms library. And you can now see that our lead gen one lead gen card is in the library for us to be able to use. So now we need to actually use this in an ad. When we are in the campaign manager, let's go down to a placeholder campaign I made, click manage. That will then bring us into the current beta campaign builder. I added in some placeholder information so we don't need to go through all the targeting and that sort of thing in this first step. So if we scroll all the way down, we'll hit save and next. And that will bring us into the ads setup section. Pretty easy here, we don't currently have any ads in place, so we'll need to create a new ad. All of this is pretty straightforward. It's all of the same ad creation steps that you would normally do in a campaign. The only difference is that when you scroll down to the bottom, you will see that there's a lead gen form section here. You can then click this drop down, and you'll see our lead gen one form that we just created. Select that. Once you've added in all of the information from the other form fields, you can hit create and you're off and running with your lead gen ad. If you haven't made your lead gen form yet, you can actually go through the process of setting up a campaign and then do the lead gen form last. If you come in here, our drop down is still here. You can see that we've selected the lead gen one piece, but if we haven't created that yet, you can easily click this button. It'll pop out a new window to be able to take you right back to that lead gen form builder and then you'll be able to choose that from the drop down. The other portion of the lead form builder are these hidden fields and what we can do with those. So all of the form fields that you see and we just went through with the builder are able to be seen by the user. The second set is going to be hidden from the user, but they're going to have a lot of benefit for us as marketers. When somebody fills out a lead gen form, since they don't come to your website, it's a little bit hard to get source and medium and campaign information. So we can use these hidden form fields to do that for us instead. Each lead gen form will allow you to have up to 20 hidden fields. And what you want to do is come in here and click the gray plus. You can then choose your field name. That should be what it will map to in your CRM, as well as the value. So they've already, got a, they've already got an example here showing field name, example could be source. So let's just say we're gonna stick with that. And then the way that I would wanna set this up is I would wanna call the source LinkedIn. Now when a lead is generated and flows into our CRM, we'll know that it came from LinkedIn because the source information will be attributed in the same way that it would if somebody came from a landing page form. We can then customize more fields in the LinkedIn lead gen form up to 20, like I said, 
with whatever you need. It can have medium, campaign, ad content, you can name the lead gen form itself. Whatever information is valuable to you to have in your CRM, you can use in these hidden form fields to know where your performance came from, where that lead came from, so you can optimize and improve performance later down the road. And there you have it. It might not be the easiest process, but it's also certainly not the hardest process that us marketers have to go through. LinkedIn lead gen ads can be highly customizable, whether it's the forms that the user sees or the hidden fields behind the form that allow us marketers to know what's actually generating leads and what's generating good quality leads and what's not. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 